pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Trustee Bowles. Here. Trustee Brown. Here. Trustee Burgess. Here. Trustee Young. Here. Too glad that for I am here. Clerks here too. <laughs> okay, let's look at the minutes. Um, we, uh, we have two sets of minutes. The first one is the 2018-19 budget hearing um, held on April 19th. We need to review and approve that. And then everybody have a chance to look at that. Are there any corrections? Page three of six. Three of six. Any verses of one from the Was this uh, the budget hearing minutes? Yeah. The plan commission report? No, that would be the regular one.
but there was one that was a small amount, I remember. And I don't remember which one it was, but, um, um, and Bobby, maybe just double check that, but I think it was a small amount, you know, on that. Um, because we were, at the end of the year, we're just correcting to get to a zero balance um, to make sure that all the water comes off.
and they have had almost six in that period of time almost 1600 meetings. So uh, where the average meeting, I don't know what the total population of the township is, but you know there should be dozens of people showing up to see the work you're doing for them and the benefits you provide to them. It's 15,600. 15,600, and other than the two township employees, I don't know if, if you're also a township employee, but we the have assessor. You the, nice the assessor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't live in the township. I actually, I'm coming all the way from Braver. I've been, I've been on Braver for over a decade, which is why my mom covers it, because she lives two miles away and I live closer to 40. Uh, sorry, I live closer to 30. But um, so if, if you're the assessor, then we have one person out of 15,000 plus when it should be dozens, because you guys, it's clear to see how much work you do and how much good you do for the people of, of, that you, you represent. And I'm glad that we have, at WKL, done our part to bring that out. I think there's some heightened awareness of what you do because of, like I said, close to 1,600 people, and I doubt that since 2012 that there have been 1,600 people that have attended meetings. I'd be surprised if there would have been a, a, 16. Well, um, 16, sure. <laughs> but, but I'd be surprised if, it, if, if the total people that had come to all the meetings would be kind of different, different heads, you know, more than 100 in that six year period, and probably not even close to that. So there is a lot. Now, in addition, since last year, we started putting everything on our Facebook page, the WKL Facebook page. And uh, we have done, uh, I think we missed one meeting, so we've had 11 meetings uh, in the last year. And um, we've had over 300 views because when it's on Facebook, people share it, it spreads viral. So you're getting uh, an average of over 25, 30, you know, 25, 30 people a month that are doing it in the township. I think it provides value um, and definitely serves you. However, the bad news is this, and you may already know it, this may be completely unknown to you. It was completely unknown to us until it dropped on our heads like a bomb. The three village mayors met I shouldn't say it's secret, but nobody knew about it except for the three village mayors. Uh, they met at private meetings. One of the village mayors said, oh, I meet with village mayor, other mayors all the time, every week, almost every day. I'm sorry, when you say the three. The three village mayors. So share? Noni, Beecher, and Piedon. Oh, OK. OK, yeah. University Park. No, because even we, University Park has had its own television station, okay. WPC, for a great many years. and, for, and well, University Park's budget was in order, let's say. They were an extremely well-funded station, uh, getting somewhere, when I talked to the station manager, between uh, salaries and their studio and their equipment budget, uh, upwards of $110,000 to $140,000 a year for covering one village. For covering three villages and five townships, we were getting $2,000 a year from each village. And that went on for over a decade. And I fought and fought and said, hey, this is ridiculous. You know, other villages, and, and, and Frankfurt has paid people to do what we did at University Park, New Lenox, and, and so on. A lot of other places, they have paid staff. Somebody's getting $40,000 a year plus benefits to run the station and cover the meetings and, and, and so on the way we do. And, uh, and we actually cover three villages. We try to do what we can for three school districts and five townships, although, like I said, um, from, from two of the townships, Green Garden and Pietone, the only meetings we ever got were ones that I or my fiance went and filmed the annual township meetings, which, as you know, those were kind of play by the numbers, you know, paint by the numbers, not, not a lot happened. But we covered those for a few years. Um, Washington Township provided for a while, and, as did Pietone. Well, the three village that we served, the, the residents of the service, because WKL is an independent corporation. We, un unlike the people, when, when you have WPC uh, serving University Park or Frankfurt Channel 6, New Lenox Channel 6, the people who run the station are municipal employees. They're paid for by tax dollars, by the money that comes in from the franchise fees. And so, the mayors, the administrations can say, you will put this on the air, you will not put that on the air. I know of an instance, I will say that there was, uh, in one village, they had a, outside the village hall a few years back, a massive tea party event, which all the I had to do was put the camera in the window and see a sea of several thousand tea party people. That was when the tea party thing was really big. Um, <coughs> five years ago or something. 
Uh, the mayor said to the to the uh, TV station manager, "You're not coming into work that day," and he didn't because he's an employee. Well, since we're an independent corporation, they can't give us work now. It was never a problem. All we ever did was we never did any controversial coverage. We covered meetings. We didn't edit the meetings. Same as we do here. We just start the camera, let it roll, etc. But maybe they just didn't like the fact that they couldn't give us orders. At one time, they formed a commission with the idea that they could tell us who our volunteers could and could not be. So they would say, well, we want a vet for you, Mark Graff. We want to hear her resume, and we'll see if she's good enough to volunteer. Well, heck, we don't have hardly enough volunteers to cover things as it is. And I simply said, no. I rejected that. You know, if you're not going to fund us, if you're not going to pay us like employees or give us an equipment budget, we're not going to take, you know, you, you want to have an employee, pay an employee. So we just said no, and that commission was never formed. And that's been on the books for about five years, six years. It never happened. Anyhow, I did get the villages eventually, after years of trying to all come up to 2,500. My hope was, since we're so dramatically underfunded, to get it come in their multi-million dollar budgets, $500 a year. So when I got them at $2,500, I submitted the budget request for the following year at $3,000, which got ignored. And then ignored, and then somebody came up. I, I forget which one. One of the villages eventually did come up to three thousand, and I think the other two stayed at twenty five hundred. And for the last four years, I've been requesting thirty five hundred, and I think we're still getting twenty five hundred. This one. Well, the village this year, I thought, you know, I'm tired of them just ignoring us. So I changed instead of sitting on the when when I was asked, hey, please submit, you know, for this year's funding. So instead of saying budget request, which they can say, oh, okay, you can request a million dollars if you want, give me 2000 I said, you know, we're an independent company. It's just like if they had a broken sink and they needed a plumbing company to come in and fix it, then the plumbing company wouldn't uh, submit a budget request and say, well, we would like $200 to fix your sink. And they go, well, that's nice, but you're getting 50 No. The plumbing company would say, fixing your sink is $167.30, here's your invoice, and you pay it. So this year on the budget request, instead of saying budget request, I just changed terminology to invoice for services. So now we had heard rumors that Moni wanted to get rid of the station under the current mayor who had voted under when he was back at trustee to defund us. And although they wouldn't come up with $500 if an increase for us, they had no problem budgeting $18,000 to put a camera in their ceiling. Actually, I think they got two cameras for $18,000, which would have been seven years of our budget. So they did that, and then camera work was a little bit better. They got their improved their sound. And then they met privately with the other two mayors and said, we're going to defund WPAL. How about you? And Beecher said, uh, Okay, we'll fund them too. And then Piatone, who's always hosted us, gave us a studio and was always a good friend of ours, instead of saying, hey, WKL, if the other two stations and villages drop their funding, what would you do? I'd say, well, you give us the funding, you give us a place to stay, and we'll continue to give you and your resident service. We just won't air the village meetings from Piet from, from Moni or Beecher. They didn't. They just said, okay, we'll fund them too. So, but they didn't tell us they were funding us. What they did is they went to Comcast, where Comcast, by the, by the uh, contract that they have, it's, uh, it's uh, I'm trying to think what the, the term is called. Uh, uh, basically, uh, it's, you're allowed to run your wires through our village uh, uh, franchise agreement. Through the franchise agreement, they were guaranteed through New Year's Eve of 2021, so for another three and a half years, Guaranteed free access to Channel 4 for the villages. And it doesn't cost them a penny to have that. Matter of fact, they make money because every Comcast subscriber, as long as they kept a fee into Comcast, they could charge them a uh, PEG fee, which is basically a government access channel fee, which is 25 cents per household per month. So if you have you know, a thousand households, it's like $3,000 a year. Now, who is getting that 3000 Well. The villages have been getting that all along through their franchise agreements. Okay. Now, I don't know, 
I can't say if they have a thousand subscribers or if 10 years ago they had 2,000 subscribers or if they had 200 subscribers because we're not getting subscriber numbers. But I'm pretty sure that then they get a franchise fee on top of that, which is like $80,000 a year or $70,000. And so the franchise fee is a much, much bigger fee. It's just the PEG channel maintenance fee was like a quarter a month or 35 cents a month per household, which paid what they were paying us and more, at least unless their numbers had completely crashed. So it really cost the village just nothing to have us. Well, these three mayors went, met in private, decided, well, we're not going to ask the public. We're not going to ask the, the churches that have been on WKL since 1987. I don't know, most people don't know this, but on Channel 4, there were churches on here for several years before a single government meeting went on. And at least one of those churches has been on since 1987 until the end of April. They went to the government liaison with Comcast before they had any meetings, before they put anything on, on an agenda, before the public was notified and said, turn off Channel 4 as of May 1st. <clears throat> because that's their idea of open government. That's their idea of sunshine. And then they said, well, you know, we're just going to get cameras and shoot it ourselves. We'll put it up on YouTube. So, you know, Moni had already spent $18,000. We had a volunteer in Moni who was shooting for us. We'll only continue shooting for them. They put it up on YouTube. Beecher, um, they had, I had worked with their previous chief of police, great guy, Jeff Weisberger, who unfortunately passed away this last year. Tremendous supporter of the station. And uh, so he and I had worked. He said, what do I need? I told him the equipment that they needed to buy so that they could have an upgraded camera. They did that. They've been doing it since he passed away. They had a volunteer running it. So they're now uploading it to, I believe, YouTube. I don't know if they have a Facebook page or uploading it to. And then uh, Piatum, subsequent to this agreement, in the last uh, few weeks, they went out and bought a camera. And now they're, they're, I don't know if they have a volunteer or if they just Start, start the camera, set it for lighting, when you record the meeting, turn it off at the end, and they put it up on YouTube. We're defunded, we're not on Channel 4 anymore. So I've got, I, I cleared out our studio, because we were only getting you know, free housing from Piatone, but I took all of our stuff, and now we've got about a $100 a month storage bill, until I can find out what we're going to do, because we've got a studio full of equipment that I've got. Uh, sell off or whatever. But we also have hundreds of people that follow us between our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. And we continue to share local events, you know, uh, things with you know, the, the park district and church bake sales and stuff like that. So, because it gets out to a lot of people and things that might only go out, let's say it might be in the Moni community forum, but it might be relevant to people in Piatone and Beecher or things in the Mike Watt and Piedone forum form that would be relevant to the other forums. By putting that up on our page, people from the whole area get to see it. Well, but we're not funded anymore. And we've got to decide what we're going to do going forward. Um, we've got bills to pay. We've got equipment to take care of. It's been proposed to me, hey, I've got a business and I've got all the equipment. I can go and approach villages out by where I live, uh, Cole City and Diamond and Braidwood that don't, they have in their franchise agreement the ability to have a channel of Comcast, but none of them are using it. See if they'd be interested in it. But we've been providing service here for many, many years. And right now, you don't have any coverage for the people. The only way people in University Park know what's going on is through WPAL. Like I said, we have almost 1,600 views. So but we don't know where those 1,600 views are coming. No, it could be people in Zimbabwe watching, but I really doubt it. <laughs> what I would like to propose is this: we continue. We recorded last month. We're recording now. Um, when I I talked to this uh, vet barn in the past about requesting funding, and we said, well. Open up your books to us. Let us know your, you know, your your entire budget. Let us know what you want to spend money on. You know how the money's going to be spent, and you know what equipment you want to buy, and then submit a budget that way. Well, we used to do stuff like that with the villages, uh, going back over ten years ago, where we had to, you know, they say, well, you get two thousand dollars, but you have to justify it in pennies. So if we didn't spend two thousand dollars that year, then we only spent seventeen hundred of it. 
than we would get in 2000. That makes sense if you're a department of a village, perhaps, if that's the way those things run. But we're not, and we don't get realistic funding either. So when we needed to buy a video server that cost us $5,000, um, it makes more sense to say, well, if we only spend $1,000 on a new computer and hard drives and cameras and whatever this year, and maintenance, that we put a thousand of that money in the bank, and then we have money that we've saved up as an independent company, so we can buy what we need. Well, Mike, what we asked for when you came several years ago mm -hmm. was that if you wish to receive any funding from us, and I spoke to the lawyer, and he said it was a possible we could probably try to work something out with that. But we do need you to do just like we ask organizations and everybody else, which is to supply us a budget which shows you income and outgo. It can be a one page, it can be very simple, it doesn't have to be detailed, mm -hmm. but we just need to have that because that is something that we ask of everybody else. Um, do you have a not-for-profit status? Yes, we are a not-for-profit. Okay, then I would need a copy of your not-for-profit status on that. And that basically, once you hand us some metal letter saying, hey, I'm requesting some funds, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, then we can look at it and, and uh, talk to the lawyer about, you know, how we could work out with the, you know, doing that as a social service because we consider that maybe it's a social service to our community to provide. Right. And if I have to do something right now, we're paying, like I said, close to $100 a month in storage fee. What I would propose is this. Um, my mom can keep coming and filming it, and we would charge what is, is very, very inexpensive for a video service, $50 a month, $50 a meeting. And for that, we would take it, you know, I would put your logos and everything out the way I've been doing for years. I don't know if any of you have seen it on YouTube or Facebook, but I put the Moline Township logos on there, and I put little things on the bottom so that, you know, people watching can see, you know, at least when it went on the air, it would come up and say what the date of the meeting and everything was. Um, but on Facebook and YouTube, obviously, it says it right on the page. So, but any, anyhow, I would edit, I'd put it together, and we'd just basically be charged with a fee for a service, $50 a month. And um, if you want to know what the income and the outgo is, it, 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 I can keep it simple. $50, keep it simple 50 we're right now have no other income. Right. So it would be $50 a month income, and our outgo is close to 100 for storage. Well, all I need from you right now, if you want, if you would consider funding to be put on the agenda for funding, is mm -hmm. your letter of request, okay. and then, you know, a copy of your, your not-for-profit, and okay. then the budget. And then you give that to us, and we can, you know, we, uh, you know, once I get that, then we can uh, either discuss it, and mm -hmm. put it on the budget, and then it can be discussed more. So. Sure, and I want to propose that, and I, I also want to say that if you choose not to do it, that's fine, too. Um, and perhaps you could find, even a volunteer, somebody from the public, the way that Moni has, that's willing to come and set up a camera and a tripod, and you could set up a Moni Township YouTube channel, or well, Moni Township Facebook page, you know, and post them yourselves. Mike, I can just speak for myself. Uh, the services that you and your mom provide, I think, is extraordinary. I think it's for the benefit of the community at large. Your mom comes here in the, in the cold, inclement weather. We stay here, you know, it's dark outside. I mean, for fifty dollars a month, it's, it's just unbelievable. So I really, really congratulate you and your mom for thirty-one years of providing this service. Well, for me, it's been two thousand two. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but the building, but the, the station's been around sure, since eighty seven. Exactly. So, you know, from that point of view, I think you can defend you. Know, you don't need to continue to defend and justify the cost for the minimum that you're asking for. I, I want to be reasonable, and I, I, I recognize that it does add up. If you look at that 600 a year, which isn't chump change. So you're telling me that the villages were giving in some type of oh, yes. compensating you in some manner, yeah, but the, the village, township never can. So the village, is that correct? No, the township never no, 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 can. Okay. Because for one thing, it's been, you know, we've not considered it as a fee for reporting because sure. it was considered brought to us always as this is um, this is a news sure. service and sure. so that's why it was like well should we be trying to pay for news you know right. well but it's not but it's 
no. considering that they're in different lights, and this is a service of getting this out to the community. I'll make sure you're and that's what we would that's how we would consider a, a social service. So as I said, let's you know, give me that information and okay. I appreciate that you're coming tonight. We need to get on with our meeting. Well, we're, we're, we're 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 okay, then just so if I find our, our not for profit staff paper shipping papers and, and we've got a CPA for our treasurer. If I can get that from him. And then something simple saying, right now our income is nothing unless we get something from you. Right. And our outgo is, I think mean, we're paying about $90 a month for storage. If that's what your budget is, income outgo, then you know that's a simple budget, that's fine. And then, um, we're good to go. uh, right. And I'll get that to you. And as long as my mom is able, uh, we will uh, continue uh, to cover your meetings. It's for me, it's for me, it's about an hour and a half round trip drive. So, I, I do have one additional question when it comes to the YouTube, you're going to post it on YouTube as well. Do you manage that at all? Do you censor that? You know, you have people that come out, they can say some crazy stuff on YouTube. We only it, it's interesting, we only allow um, approved comments, yeah. and of the hundreds of videos yeah. that I put up since you know 2012. Between all the sources we have mm -hmm. or had, um, we've gotten less than 10 comments total. We've had, never had one, but if somebody were to comment on 10, what we always do is we post it on Facebook and say we welcome you to comment on the video, and we always link it to the Facebook because on, on Facebook, one, it's better, it's viral. Two, people's Facebook, it's usually their name and they're responsible for it. So if it's, you know, John, you know, John Smith making a comment on YouTube, he could be, you know, uh, polka dot bunny, and you don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. And polka dot bunny could say, I don't like Trusty Smith. Sure, like but on, on, on Facebook, it's usually John Smith going, I don't like Trusty Smith. So they're responsible for their comments. And of course, if somebody were to be vulgar or slanderous or libelous, right. we can delete that, of course, since it's going to be a post to a book. We've, again, never had that issue. Um, the 1,600 viewers that you've got, okay, is there any way you can see how many of those 1,600 come from the geographical areas of Point Township? There may be. I've never actually looked into it. And that's 1,600 collectively since 2012. Okay. That's not every month. Well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it was, but I was just concerned how so, many of the 1,600. Some um, months, there's, you know, I'd say some months there's five, six, eight views. Some months, something happens here that's exciting, and we have 75 years. I think one month we had several hundred. I mean, something must have been really exciting that month. In that example, is there any way? There may be. I've never looked into it because I've, I've, nobody's ever asked me. I've always assumed that, you know, why would somebody from Tennessee or Botswana want to watch a Moni Township meeting or, or a beach or village board meeting or anything like that? So I'll look into it. And I'll see if I can find that out. Okay. And uh, if I can get you, I'll, I'll probably, uh, if I do find that out, I'll, lose, I'll talk, I'll call, talk to Will, I'll get your email address. Yeah, and I'll take that. To get this on our June agenda, so that uh, you would have to get this to us, the, you know, by, I would say, um, about that first week of June. Oh, sure. Okay. Well, it's, now that I know how simple it is, I thought you needed our entire budget. No, I need a budget. You know, well, budget. that's what I thought you meant. Is what is your annual budget? What do you spend money on? What do you that's kind of what a budget is, and but you're saying you have nothing coming in and nothing, you know, going out. But right. all right, but so make your simple budget. But that right. okay. All right, then we're going to go on into the next. Unless sure. somebody has any other yeah, questions, we're going to move on. Thank you all for your time. Okay. Thank you for Thanks. the information you provide. Thank you. Very well received. And I want to make one comment. Sure. I am not quite so certain that it was like the three mirrors getting together. Mm -hmm. I'm not certain that's illegal. Um, oh, I didn't say it was. No, I'm just saying that you kind of questioned it. So I just want to bring up the fact that <coughs> mayors and people can talk to each other. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, and, and since they're not actually making the decisions, if I'm right. correct, they're just, you know, so they what do, they, they have said, to take it back to their board. I haven't had any private discussions with any of the mayors since then. This is only based on what they said, and it can be viewed on the WPAL Facebook page and on the WPAL YouTube channel. The meetings that were the 
last meetings of the month in April. Okay. Um, and really, nothing was told in Moni. They said, we'll discuss it. They had a vote. It was silent. It was zero discussion. In Beecher, uh, a preacher, from a pastor from one of the churches that's in Beecher, Diane Luther, came and talked to him. And the, and, and the village president or mayor talked to him. And then there was also a couple people that came to the funeral meeting. So I can only go out by what they said. They did say that it was the meeting of the mayor. It was made evident that before anything was put on the agenda and, and in the agendas, it was in two of the three villages. All they said is, remember that oversight commission I told you they formed six years ago? All they said is, we're repealing the oversight commission, that we're repealing the ordinance to create the oversight commission. Now, the station was around for roughly 25 years before that commission was authorized, although it never came to pass. But right. that, was the, that was the that was the ordinance. We do have to move on. Yeah, right. I, 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 I never said that right. what they did was illegal. Okay. It was just Questionable. behind closed doors. Questionable. Yes. Great. Okay, we're going to move on. Let's All move right. On thank to you. To supervisor's report, to the general assistance report, just as soon as April um, 13th through May 10th, 2018, we have 10 intakes, five applications, zero flat grant, zero other aid. We have 11 coming for pantry, six are denied. Two pending, one terminated. We have seven on our general assistance rolls. We spent $1,715 for general assistance, $1,800 for emergency assistance for a total of $3,515 for that period. Um, senior committee, we have uh, the next event is June 14th. It's called Celebrate America. It will be here. And it is uh, trade as seniors who live in Moni Township, age 65 and over, but you must pre-register by calling the township. And uh, we, uh, it fills up kind of quickly, and we can only, because this room uh, with five tiny time put tables and chairs in it, we can take between 90 and 89 people fairly comfortable, so you do have to call in. Um, and that's everything I have. Uh, clerk report. Uh, on April 30th, I uh, actually uh, filed the uh, budget and appropriation uh, for the, uh, both the township and the uh, road commission. And uh, also filed the annual reports with the county clerk's office. Okay. All, all three of them. That's basically all I did. Great. Okay, highway commission. We're replacing culverts. Uh, <clears throat> I attended a meeting with the village pertaining to the Ridgeland Avenue warehouse. Uh, they're going to do some work on it. Uh, we built Ridgeland Avenue on the part of uh, uh, what they got, what the village has got, and of course it runs into the township roads, and they, they got to do some uh, narrowing. And uh, so we're still in discussion over that. Uh, I'm working on a bid <coughs> for uh, overlay on Harlem Avenue. Uh, I had a conversation with, their, with the engineer for Aqua. They're, they're about getting done with that project. I got to give that a look, a look over. And uh, uh, welcome back, Willow. <laughs> you sure missed her. <coughs> yes, indeed, we did. Yeah, so I'm glad she's back. <laughs> I do want to say that that Aqua project was wonderful, but my water bill just went up 17 bucks. <laughs> <coughs> oh, yeah. Five, oh, 17 bucks. Seventeen dollars. I was like, percent. He said because oh, that would be better water. <laughs> oh, one other thing. I replaced the street signs in there. I was just, I was, I was, I was, I was yep. a big fan. Yep. I just saw that the other day. I'm just trying to yep. something looks different here. Yep. I, I'm sorry. Which street sign was hard to hear? All of the street signs in Hellebrook. Hellebrook. Yeah. Hellebrook. All of the street signs in Hellebrook. And we yeah. had some lady come and say, "Can I have some of those as souvenirs?" And she came and took some. So yeah, the mom, <laughs> mom and my family did. Do you still have some? No, they're all gone. Oh, I would have liked that. Yeah. What do you want? Melissa? Melissa Court? Oh, they bond was good. Oh, it's granddaughter. Yeah, they want to hang it in the garage. Oh, I didn't know who it was that came yeah. in and asked, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got that taken care of, so. Okay. Anything else for David? Okay, Sasser. Okay, good evening, everyone. I got a couple of things. I want to first start off with a sharing an announcement. Uh, the Sessor's office uh, will have a workshop on the 24th of May. 
Um, it will be regarding the tax bills, exemptions, and assessments. Uh, a lot of uh, people have been coming in already. Mm -hmm. And so we always feel there's a need around this time of the year to kind of get, you know, people's uh, input, but then also to share what we know about what may be happening on the tax bill. What's but then it's, uh, it's from 5.30 to 6.30 at the assessor's office, 46 Township, 46 Town Center in University Park. And what day is that The 24th is on a, t a Thursday. Uh, right. 9.30 uh, to 6.30? 9.30 to 6.30. You all are always invited to come. Bobby comes. Give me a phone. Yeah, but we do share a lot of good information too and uh, get some worries dispelled or whatever. Um, but this is the time of the year that we also are in the middle of doing the reassessments for the uh, 2018. The um, factor that I received from the county this year was 3.73%, uh, so almost a 4% increase. Um, that's going to be expected. Um, we are hiring um, some, one summer student that's our plan, and one student, uh, one person that I'm going to be speaking with, Donna, because she and I had talked earlier about someone that they might refer to the office uh, for summer work and for, you know, temporary. Has anybody come over? Because I know one person I told them. No, not yet. Not yet. Um, and we are starting to set appointments with residents. Uh, that's how we usually can do a one-on-one -on -one with someone. We ask them to call, and or they, if they come in, but to set an appointment so that we can sit down and we pull the documents to help them see this is what you know we have to work with. This is the sales that was that occurred last year. These are comparisons that you know based on the style of your home that's just like yours that we have assessed correctly Donna knows I went through it with her like last year so uh, so we're starting that now and um, again like I said many people have been coming in with their bills uh, one thing that I noticed is that and I will be asking about this I'll be inquiring about this the school district uh, increase seemed to be more than 5%. Do you know if that was the case this year? No, it was CPI. It okay. was just grab, we did, we below this so we can capture new property. Okay. Yeah, it was, no, it was whatever CPI, 1.7 or something like that. Yeah. 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 I mean, from, but it was based on last That's January yeah. CPI. Well, I would, I would advocate to seniors. Um, some of the people that have come in, we found that the county, because they switched to a new system. <laughs> you know about that? Well, right? I, I call them the youngest. Yeah, and saying. some people who had senior freezes, the they they give it like a base year when you when you get a set, mm -hmm. and their base years got shifted to 16 for some reason, and so instead of seeing their continued protection, they saw increase. Some of them double their bills. You, you just don't know. <laughs> But I'm just saying, all seniors, please look at your tax bill. Don't just think that, you know, that it, that's just the way it is, because it could have been a mistake, because we've had to call the county, and they're sending out correct bills for some of those. So please look at your tax bill. What Come they, to our workshop. Yes. What they said was that you have to pay the bill at the first. The first, yes, you thanks, you, you do. Later Thank because you. they said Thank that the new that's system correct. costs a lot of glitches. That's, yeah, that's right. And, and that's right. When they send a corrective bill, they want you to go ahead and already pay the first one. And then they'll make the adjustment for what they shouldn't have charged you on the first and second, on the second. So please look at your tax bills, come to our worship. Yeah, I'm just disturbed that they are sending you that you have to have a 3.73% increase. The problem is, is that University Park, our area, has not increased in value. And yet we, you know, you're asking to be putting increases mm -hmm. on property that has not gone up in value. I mean, it, there's no way I can sell my house for what right. I'm being assessed at. If I could just take a couple more minutes and, and expound on that, 
I, I, I've been objecting, you know I've been telling you, I've been objecting to it. Last year was 7%, so I just want you to know. Um, it's had almost that this year. But the way that they determine if we're too high or too low is they go by the sales that occur in a year. Like last year we had 160 market sales. Let me see, take it back. Market sales, right? And so they look at what that property is. Let me use the example. If we have a property assessed at 50,000, then that would indicate that they should sell for 150. But if that property happened to sell for 180, 200, it tells them that we got the properties assessed too low. Right? Well, a lot of those homes that's selling for that 180 when it was maybe assessed at 50 was sold or lost in a foreclosure. Investors bought them, fixed them up, and of course they should get to sell it for 180. But my issue has been, what I say to the county, is that normally when we let the prices that are inclining affect the whole area is when there's growth. These properties that are recovered from, re from foreclosure, fixed up and resold, that doesn't represent growth. <coughs> and so it ends up impacting everybody else. So now, by the way, you can't even sell yours, right? right? You can't even sell yours, but you have to carry that percentage that's represented from those 160 sales that they feel was under. Yeah. Can I, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. On Thursday, May 24th, from 530 to 630, mm -hmm. that's an hour. Mm -hmm. What is going to be the primary focus of your workshop? It's going to be the tax bill, exemptions, and assessments. Mm -hmm. You come? That's right. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 see, my concern is that. Well, first of all, you're going to be able to cover all that in one hour. Because we do it all the time, Jeff. Okay, all right. You well, ask I've, been, I've, been there, I've been there one time before, and, you know. We cover all of that in an hour. Tax bill ex exemptions and assessments. assessments. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing is that how many homes have been sold in University Park in the past year, you know? Not in University Park. I just said how many were sold in the township was 160. You know how many were sold in University Park? I just said, I don't know that. Okay. I just told you how many was sold in the township. 160 yeah. in the township. Mm -hmm. You know the geographical areas that those homes are sold within the township? If I looked at my report, I could tell you that. You mean 2018 before 2017 ended? No, no. 2017 taxes is going to be paid this year. Right. Right? That's correct. Right. Okay. So a lot of people got their, in, in Cook County, they got their bill for 2017 before 2018 ended. And they were able to pay those 2017 taxes, not this year. But before the end of 2017, and they was able to carry that on their tech right at all. Okay, they got their 2017 bill before 2017 ended. Right. You kept right. saying before 2018 yeah. ended. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why I was questioning. Well, scratch that on the camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're it's right. clarified now. You're right. You're right. So, Will County, Will County, I guess, uh, 
perform the assessment. You did the assessment for 2017 last year, right? You did that assessment. We but did we that. haven't got the bill. Is that you correct? just got the bill. Just got the bill. Yeah, I just get the phone calls from the bill collector. That's all. Right. Yeah, you, they, okay. they came out. Okay, came out. However, there was a lot of people lined up. I was one of those person in Will County, mm -hmm. a clerk's office, in December, like December, right before the end of the year, to try to take advantage of the new tax law that was going to impact someone like me negatively because of the $10,000 limit between property taxes and your state income tax the amount. That's the limit there between those two. $10,000 is the limit. Mm -hmm. So I pay more than $10,000 on my property taxes. Okay. So I tried to take advantage of that. <clears throat> but however, come to find out that because I did not get the bill, which just it came, it sounded like it just came over the last week or so, mm -hmm. it should have came to take advantage of that to pay my taxes early. I should have actually got a bill before 2017 ended. That did not happen. The bill county she, doesn't operate that way. But I, exactly. Yeah, but I understand something like when I was talking to a co-worker of mine that did not get a bill as well, but their tax assessor supposedly had some legal loophole to give them a letter or something saying that, I don't know if you know anything about that. Okay, well just like Donna said, the, with all the training that we go through, every book we read, even the township book, yeah, yeah. it'll say, it's this way, except in Cook County. Okay. That's just the standard line. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's because Cook County has their own way of operating. Uh -huh. Now, I can say this, usually when something happens in Cook County first, mm -hmm. they might set the precedence for the rest of the state. But the rest of the state does not operate like Cook County. Mm -hmm. The, the Will County I can speak for personally is that our tax bill only come out in May and September, mm -hmm. or it really rather it comes out in May for both May and September mm -hmm. payment. Mm -hmm. That's when our payments are. We have not gotten a law that says that we can do anything, mm -hmm. any such thing as okay. that, and so until that's the case. But just because they're doing it in Cook County, mm -hmm. I have to tell that to people all the time that come in to have homes or they live in Cook County, why y'all don't do it like that? Because we don't do it. The rest of the state does, not just Will County, mm -hmm. does not do it like Cook County does. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a lot of people coming in at the end of December and, you know, yeah, where do I go to do this? I'm like, well, you can check out the county because we, and they wanted to know if we did it. And I said, I don't think the assessor will figure that out for you either. No. And the Will County group don't either. They, they're pretty set too, and that's just the way the rest of the state rises. Whatever you do, period. But they were collecting the checks. There were people lined up as far as the eye can see, and no one said that, no, you cannot take the deduction for your real estate taxes, property taxes. Well, how did I have people end up going there? Did somebody because, call and say, yeah, because, you know, you can because it was on the news? You can pay it. It was on the news. Yeah. So it was on the news? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hurry up. That's okay. I wasn't out there. there. You pay, but you put deducted from the tax bill. Yeah. 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 Because you could yeah. deduct them unless you had. So it was an estimate. I estimated. I estimated, you can talk about 3%, I estimated my previous bill and I just added, I actually added 10% so I can make sure that I covered it. But you couldn't take that off on your taxes for the like, uh, Legally, because the people. government comes saying, you know, we're going to audit you or you can't do it unless you receive the bill. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, that sounds like a <laughs> personal thing. Uh, do you have anything left to read? I think that was it. Let me see. The supervisor said that in person. That's it. All right. Let's move on. This is easy. It's very long. All right. Attorney. All right. All right. All right. Um, Plant Commission, we've had a report, but he's going to give that when we get into the uh, zoning case later on in the agenda. That's okay, Jeff. Uh, we're going to go into new business. The uh, will ride. Uh, for February of 2018, uh, it was $2,096.20 to pay. It's listed as a discussion item because we prepaid January, February, March. And um, at the bottom of your thing, it should show that we do have a credit 
with them of um, 45, 17, 61. So we are still good to go. Um, Torma Insurance. Um, we are paying the Torma Insurance and the contribution is um, for road and bridge, fifteen seven eighty one, and for town, ten thousand eighty nine dollars, which is split between the assessor's office and the town fund. Uh, and I need a motion uh, to approve uh, the sending the check. Can we do this at one time, Joe? We have two separate motions. Okay. I need a motion to um, uh, pay the uh, Torma uh, risk payment for the general town fund of uh, an assessor's fund of uh, ten thousand eighty-nine dollars. Um, this only says the town. Well, the, the it's on the next page. The next assessor, page. But we add them together because that's oh, yeah, all yeah, on the yeah. town fund. Ten thousand eighty-nine. Oh, she doesn't need to look. Thank you. What do you got for next time? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to give you one. Dr. Weber doesn't You got two detective ones? No, you're still going to be right. No, I'm talking to the agenda. No, I'm talking to the agenda. No, no, you're fine. Pull uh, well, up, never mind. Are okay? Yeah. It's a back to the agenda. Oh. Well, I see the assessor. And I see. Well, yeah, if, add, if you add, add five zero four four fifty and five zero four four fifty, it comes to ten thousand eighty nine dollars. Okay, I got that part. Okay. Come on, this is the invoice, and it only says the town fund, right? It no, right above it, it says bridge. See, the whole invoice. She said town fund and assessor. So no, why. town and assessor together is ten thousand eighty nine. We're going to do a second vote for the road bridge for that fifteen thousand. And I got you. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Okay. On this too, and I do have a back issue. She just cut down a tree. She just cut down a tree for you guys. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> All right. What I'm saying is that. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right. Is there a motion to approve <coughs> the uh, town Torma uh, insurance for ten thousand eighty nine dollars? So okay. moved by that. Second by Debbie. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Uh, Trustee Bowles? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. To go out of the network? Yes. Is there a motion to approve the road uh, Torma insurance for $15,781? Maurice? Second. And second by Terry. Um, roll call vote, please. Trustee Bowles? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. So go out to that barn. Yes. I found the pen right out of me. on this because I know that as it says on there it just says town fund is paying but we do pay half of the the right. town fund so I was requesting I had to ask down about it before that whenever uh, Torma Tor Tor gives credit back that the assessor could also get a portion of that credit back when it's you know refunded back I know it's not all the time and I explained to her what she's talking about is the Torma dividend that we mm -hmm. The Torma dividend is what? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're lovely. The Torma dividend comes back. <coughs> and, um, but as I said, Sandra is not being cheated out of any money at all. Out of this budget, she is getting 4.5% of new money. We've bought an extra 7.8% is what we're getting this year in tax money. She's getting 4.5% of it. The town is getting 3.3%. 3 
So, oh, no, ma'am. Yes, oh, no, ma'am. That is not correct, Donna. You know that. Is what we are getting from back in our taxes in this year in tax, you know, from our tax levy and everything. That's not correct, Donna. That Come on. Correct. No, ma'am. If we get, I get four, if, if I was getting a percentage of what was what was submitted, then I would be getting seven something. So that wouldn't mean that you wouldn't be getting any. No, no, no. You all I, all I request is for in your budget when we budgeted. You right, but I'm not taking away from you. You're not getting what's left. Five, and we only got an extra three point three. So I'm saying you have that extra. So what comes in is that the this comes in from our general town fund. And you I can show you that that's not true. Just be quiet. We are getting oh, this as part of our budget. <laughs> and our part of our budget is this. When she submits her budget, she's getting her budget. She's getting her fair share of it. There is no reason to give her this come into the dividend, comes into the town fund, and it comes into the uh, road and bridge, just like it's broken out here. And she is getting her fair share of our budget. Okay, and but that's not it. true what you said, that I'm getting set for percent of the seven. You only get three. Yes, this year was the increase of that. So you did get that increase in your budget. I got an increase, but I didn't take away from what you had. You got what I didn't take out of the seven percent. Three point three. So you got your seven plus the three this three percent that I didn't get. So you got if you want to say that ten percent of the whole thing. No, I did not take away come on now. Y'all Look and at the dollars. I'm not going to argue with I'm you. I'm just saying. I, no it, 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 I agree with the budget. You did. I was talking about the torment. You got the and budget. And the torment is broken up like this. Yes. When we get the dividend in, it goes into the town fund. The town fund comes into the general money that is comes from every place. And then I said, you are getting more than your fair share of that. So well, that, that's just going to be the I'm getting y'all's money too. Don't believe, Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. But I'll show business. you the numbers next time. That's the way I'll show you the numbers, what my four percent represent, and what was actually brought to the township, and you'll see. I Let's move on. We are now out of order. That's we are moving on into the zoning case. Uh, the zoning case is uh, Z one thousand eight hundred one zero. It's a solar farm that is located on uh, Route fifty and Offner Road. Um, Jeff is here because he is chairman of our plan commission and uh, we had a plan commission meeting on Tuesday where we had a man from the solar, it's called the solar gardens now, uh, and there's an insert on the table that uh, you have a copy of what was presented that night and uh, what we discussed. And Jeff, did you want to have some say a few things on that? Sure. So this is one of two um, cases that will come before the uh, land use uh, for the county. And um, they've had to contact the highway commissioner early on to talk about getting access to the property. And they're going for a special use permit of the property, not a rezoning. It's a 17-acre parcel. Um, it will be solar panels that will connect into the Commonwealth Edison grid through the so-called interconnect and it will put electricity back into the system. I don't understand how it provides lower cost power and to whom. But as far as the use is concerned, um, we looked at what impact it would have, if there was any objections we might have to it being there. And uh, on this 17 acres, they will have sol solar panels, an array of solar panels that will be uh, mounted on steel posts that will be driven into the ground, so they will not be concrete um, foundations for each solar, solar panel. The solar panels will move over the course of the day to track the sun. And once the construction is complete and the so-called solar farm or solar garden is in place, it will be rather quiet and um, not much impact to the area. We asked um, questions like, would there be any change in the land, like grading that might affect water runoff and, and thus 
far, there is not any anticipated. Um, the property will be fenced. Um, they had to, this particular uh, company for this particular property has had to address concerns of the uh, Willow County Forest Preserve because it's pretty much adjacent to um, Raccoon right. right. Grove on the south end. Um, so in case there was any animals that died near it, they would have to address that, so they've done that. And um, we didn't see anything that was objectionable. I also did some research on this um, type of land use nationwide. Um, this is a result of the Future Energy Jobs Act that was passed in December of 2016 in Illinois, which calls for a certain amount of energy to be created from solar and fed back into the grid, presumably at much lower cost than what it would take to generate it. And Commonwealth said that Edison has to you know, participate in this. So um, from a land use perspective or a township perspective, the, the types of things that people typically ask, not only here, but in other neighboring townships, according to uh, the lady at the Will County office and, and other townships, are things like, Will it be visually um, uh, annoying in any way to local land owners or property owners or houses? Um, in this case, we don't think there is that sort of a problem. Um, will it affect animals in any adverse way? And the answer is presumably no. Um, will, uh, will the uh, panels provide uh, unreasonable reflective light? It would. They would cause a distraction to cars, airplanes, or anything like that. And um, I understand there are products that, that do have that issue. And this vendor assured us that they do not have that style of, of uh, material that they use, so it won't be a problem. Um, they have, this particular vendor has numerous projects going on in the state of Illinois. Um, so it was helpful to hear from, from that particular vendor. But we will also have another parcel that's been filed with the county and notified to our township at um, Offner and Will Center Road. That's on right there. Well, Center and Paul. Center, Center, Center and Paul, right. thank you. Yeah. Um, so there'll be a second one shortly to follow. So we'd be happy to answer more questions about it, but it seems rather um, uh, non impact to our community. Um, it is vacant land right now. Farmland. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 it's not farm. It's not farm. It's not farm. No one is not farming. No. It, it, it is zoned agricultural. Yeah. Right. But it's not currently under no. farm. Well, but a little, little center. That's farm. That's farm. Yeah. 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 We haven't seen any work on that yet. That's coming. Um, one thing that we did. Uh, uh, what was interesting is that what happens is that. They have to go through this process. They've already submitted paperwork to ComEd sometime in the in the last how many months, I don't know. Um, and then once they have to get the approval from the Will County Board, once they get that approval is when then they will then go back to ComEd and work out the details of how it's all done. But isn't that what he said, basically? Yeah, there's a lot of variables in this equation, so they were unable to estimate an accurate date of when they would complete this project. For example, one variable is even though this Future Energy Jobs Act is passed, there has to be an independent third party who is the go-between between Commonwealth Edison and these sort of companies to broker the oversight of the sale of the energy and other things that I don't fully know all the details of. That third party hasn't even been assigned in the state of Illinois, that could affect the timeline. They're optimistic that they would have this project completed at the specific case we're talking about at Offner and Pauly by the end of the year, but it's rather difficult to say if that would truly happen. I said, yeah, they hope to have everything in place so they can start building it and then maybe have it up and running by the summer of 2019. Maybe. <laughs> you know, how is it going to be maintained as far as vegetation and things of that nature? What they're going to do is plant on this property. They they state that they're going to plant um, low-growing grasses and maybe some flowering plants 
and they'll have to use some sort of weed control, probably, particularly early on. Um, but the vegetation will be kept low. Um, the county calls for a chain link fence on the entire property. They wanted a little bit more decorative fence. They said they claim that they might still try for that. But it does, the, the Will County does require a chain link fence all the way around. And there's one primary physical structure, a pad of concrete that holds um, a power inverter and I think a transformer. Um, but other than that, it's going to be the soil with low growing vegetation. And the only noise that comes out of it is when the, the, the solar energy is going through the wires to the inverter, and that might, we say, have like a hum of a refrigerator. Right. So it's not really heard more than 100 feet away, even that. Who's so, uh, going to provide the security? Presumably, they do, uh, the trustee. I mean, they have the, they have the fence, they have it locked. Um, the way this particular vendor described it, they contract with local people to perform maintenance or inspection. Like, let's say, I think to myself, let's say there was a windstorm and something got damaged, they've got to come out and, and repair it. But it's going to be a locked chain link fence, and um, presumably that's the, the level of security that they have. Right, there's no employee on, on site at all. I mean, this is just once they put it in, it's, it's, uh, there's no employee. So and, uh, but I asked them how they would know if they had like a damaged panel or something like that. And they said, well, that's maintained electronically and they could always tell it by the type of energy and, and that they were receiving in. And if the reports started to vary in some way, then they would know that something was not functioning. Yeah, it will be monitored 24 by 7 right. through electronic means. You know, I get this buzzword, like it's really gonna positively impact the community in a positive way. How is it? You said supposedly your electric bill is gonna be lower. And I, you know, they got this community. What, so what is this doing for you? <coughs> no, there, there is a, there was a statement made that hypothetically that, that it would increase uh, taxes. Not necessarily on the real estate, but there would be some taxes it would would occur because, because of our assessors here meaning that crop that land is going to be assessed more. It's not in the tip no, area. The you know, thing it is, I, I, this this individual is was more of a, a representative of the company. I don't think he's qualified to answer that question, but there was an implication that there would be added tax dollars. And what was confusing was. It, the, and he implied that the, that the land would not be taxed differently because it's not being rezoned. Could it be it's not, it's, not, it's not being rezoned? No. Solar, solar use. farm. Special use. Special use. Uh, but what they're saying is this. If the, the, the equipment, and that's the problem they had with the assessment of solar areas, is because the equipment is considered disposable equipment, is that it? Or not, not permanent? Uh, yeah, it's not permanent. Not fixed. permanent equipment. No. And because of that, that's what they're saying yeah. that um, because it's not permanent on the land that they are assessing them. They it's like an in ground swimming pool and an above ground swimming pool? Well, you do get assessments on both of those. It's right. just so not the same assessment. Yeah. But yeah. when you think about uh, the uh, uh, cell towers, they could be removed or whatever, but we do assess them. Right. We certainly do. Them, but not at the same price as a permanent structure, right? No, it's, it's for that structure. So we assess it like that structure would be assessed. What they so it may not be like nothing else because there's no other wind, you know, equipment but that you can use. The power generators, yes. the gas company, yeah. they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not assessed. On what? On their value. I thought they went to court and they got that thrown out because they were You mean like for the wind? No, 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 no. The ones, the, the gas powered ones. We got you mean in University Park? Yeah, here? yeah. The creek right off I-57. Yeah. Yeah. That might be true. That might be true. Yeah. And just, just for information here, because this is an egg problem too, and they're yeah. talking about the assessments. They're still working on that in the state legislature. Yeah, they got some. They're working on that because the farming community is kind of upset about this. You know, using these things as because uh, uh, they're paying, they're paying exorbitant amounts of money for rent to the to the owner. Yeah, to the owner, to the owner of the property. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the two that are, the two that are, are are being built here are absentee landlords. They're not family farmers. They're not any of that kind of stuff. See, 
and then they're paying up to a thousand bucks an acre for 20 years and then they got an option there for you know on and on but the, the biggest concern of mine is disposal you know when they decommission it of course what are you going to do with the Amazon building when it's that gets decommissioned? It's the TIF, it's, it's the TIF mentality. Yeah. After the, you know, it's disposable, we out of here, don't renew it, it you can have that building. Look at the buildings in University Park, Mooney, oh, yeah. already yeah. exists. Yeah. It's, it's a but this is going to be, TIF. This is going to be, a, this is going to be a township problem. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, because they're going to be calling. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if there's a real commissioner around, then he'll, he'll be the first one to get the call. And they, 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 they use this building for, I can't see any benefit for the community, in my opinion. Well, supposedly it's electricity. electricity eventually, you know. Okay. Yeah. And there's so, no downside. The I, I only downside is possibly 35 years down the line when they, uh, if it's decommissioned, and that might not be decommissioned because they might yeah. be putting in new solar equipment, but then it would actually be the, the lease, the landowner, Mm -hmm. that would have the problem of what they have to do with it. It wouldn't be a township problem. And, and uh, David himself has said that he sees no, uh, you know, doesn't see too much of a downside on this because now when if he has to go to COVID and then he's being paid for oh, all yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, so it's no money on the township at all. And it might save people some money by having some solar. So uh, uh, I know, Jeff, your opinion of the plan commission came that you would have no objection. I mean, the conservation is no problem at all. Okay. If it's going to be turned back to grain farming, or it's going to be turned back to this, with vegetation planted on it, erosion wise, water wise, much better off of the solar. I would like to see a certain percentage of their revenue go to the neighborhoods and go to the different entities of the government. Well, I that's what I would, I would say. I do think they got to be taxed. They got to be taxed accordingly. I mean, it's still, it's still, it's still, right. a, it's, it's, still it's still a money producing. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's what the legislators are yeah. working on. They're working on a law that will help, you know, the assessors with, you I know, so. maybe do a better, not, not be consistent, but, you know, yeah. I make a higher, so that there's more tax dollars yeah. coming out. And then just going consistent. with, you know, and I can't as a come in employee, per se, come in do not generate power. So come in, per se, do not care what is being generated out there per se. We do not generate power. There is going to be some common involvement because of the wiring and connected to our grid. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we encourage more people to generate power. It's put on a grid and have a national organization that is controlling the, uh, the deployment of power, so on and so forth. So come in has nothing to do with generating power. Now, Exxon, our parent company, kind of deals with mm -hmm. that a little bit along with other, but that's a national organization that deals with that. Well, the only thing they say here is that as of December 16th, legislation requires utilities like Comet to have a 3.0 gigawatts of solar in the energy mix. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think they say this generates, yeah. this one little farm two generates me. two megawatts. Yeah. So Correct. Yeah, and it's not um, going to the community. It's going on the grid. And the grid is going to control the grid, not just Exxon, whatever. It's going to go to the east, what? But it would eventually lower all the bills a little bit. And they said that they will build the billing outfit. Take your bill and energy bills, and they'll show solar bill. That's what they have to see. All right, what I need to do now is. Question? No. What I need to do now is. Ask that um, we take a vote to uh, send a letter of no objection to the um, land use committee, and uh, because they are going to have a zoning hearing on June fifth, and they wanted the uh, they wanted any letters sent to them by the week before that. So, is there a motion to send a letter of no objection? 
that uh, that's your recommendation, Jeff, from the zoning committee? From the zoning committee for commission perspective, I don't see an objection to it. We do not have to send a letter to the county offering any uh, opinion if we don't want to. They welcome the, the opinions uh, from you um, and, and from us. We, we, we're not obligated to. No, they, they, they are usually there's a, a no objection or there's an objection letter. If it's an objection letter, then the Will County Board has to uh, have a uh, vote by have a three quarters uh, approval rather than just a simple majority. And I think that's the difference. But as he's right, if we didn't want to send a letter at all, that would be considered a letter of non-objection. I think they do need to hear from us. So I'll, uh, I'll offer that motion. I'll make that motion. I'll okay. send a letter of no objection. Okay. James, and is there a second? Anybody want a second this? Further discussion on this? Roll call. Trustee Gold? Yes. Trustee Brown? Nay. Trustee Bridges? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Who the letter? Yes. All right. We will send that letter. Um, <coughs> the email we got from the lady at the land use who will send that to her. Uh, the next thing is the Will County Center for Community Concerns Social Service Agreement for $1,500. We have um, in the past given to them, I think, on a yearly basis. Um, last year we gave, it was in June, and it was $1,500. Be on the back of your page, it shows you all the different services they provided for Mona Township for a total of $294,222. And, um, they continue to uh, help our township residents. And they did send over a budget, which I asked them for. And uh, so I think we have everything we need. Their motion to um, do a social service agreement with Will County Center for Community Concerns for $1,500. Project reports. Um, we don't, probably don't have anything we're going green. 
other than we keep putting our um, recycling information is in our newsletter every month. Yeah, I tell uh, Debbie and James to not have a look at our copies that they do not need. <laughs> trees, save the trees. <laughs> save the trees. Um, <laughs> and then the next item is uh, on the youth committee, the GSA <coughs> want to pay them $1,400 for um, the time that we have spent, we never, you know, they're supposed to send us invoices, they never do. So we, you know, we want to take a proactive stance and just pay them for what we know. And um, we sent that to double check that, you know, that May 6th was our last meeting. And uh, you have not gone since then, have you? <laughs> May 6th, you missed my Yeah, we missed Mother's Day. Right, so that's the end of it. I have to get the will up. She's bad. Sorry. Any volunteers ever said about things? Any volunteers ever said about things? It was, it was, it was uh, pretty intense, pretty grueling. I have some newcomers. I have some money that I need to turn in and all of that. I'll get with you and like, catch up on paperwork, a lot of paperwork. So, uh, by our next week, I have that. I don't know if there's somehow we can. Try to get more volunteers. I mean, maybe think on that, and you know how that can be improved because it's uh, wearing, and you know, you and your family are basically the ones that are doing the, all of it. So we, you know, it's not really being supported very well that way. So um, uh, we need to you know if other people can come in, step up, or get some people that were interested in the first place. Maybe some of the kids that have been in the past, we could kind of try to bring them in as volunteer. Maybe um, we'll have to start thinking about maybe bringing in some of the, the the older kids that have stayed in the area that are interested in keeping it going, and you know maybe paying them, you know, ten dollars, ten dollars an hour or something. I mean, I think we have to keep it minimal. We can't pay a lot, but maybe right. that might be something to do that. But.
see what else can happen if they have anything else to say. Um, the only thing I want to mention is that uh, the village of Moli is going to have their annual shift meeting on next Thursday, the 23rd at 4 p.m. The Moli Village Hall, where they talk about the shifts that they have open, and that's just the, the yearly meeting that all shift people are supposed to have. And uh, usually, I get something from University Park, and I haven't this year yet. So, uh, but anyway, the only one is on the. Uh, at the village hall at 4 p.m. next Thursday. I know David's probably going yeah. if he can, and I'm going to be going on that. So. I got 23rd. 23rd Thursday. I'm sorry, Wednesday. No, it is Wednesday because the third, 24th, I have to go to a scholarship night. So. Um, well, I got a couple of comments. First of all, I want to say that um, you know we, I have been involved in the residency issue with. Them. Money School District since uh, October of last year. So as of May 1st, I'm happy to report that the school district has not eliminated any student <coughs> that they suspected of being in violation of residency. I had always believed that uh, the school district is equally responsible as any suspect violator was. Uh, but that's not going to stop them from preventing um, the suspect violates from re-registering within the school district, which is nothing unusual because school districts do um, enforce residency uh, requirements. But uh, So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Now, for the benefit of the student, <clears throat> it appears that they're going to be allowed to finish out the school year, which is a good thing. Um, but the other side of that is that um, they still have some open cases. Uh, the last report I got is that it's something like 396 open cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, national investigations is still out there uh, doing what I call sneaking in people. Uh, but unless the parents step forth and ask for assistance, there's very little that can be done in terms of uh, assisting and clarifying and resolving the problems. So that's the latest information. Uh, the other thing is that this board is going to be meeting uh, June 21st, the next board meeting. So I want to wish all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day mm -hmm. because Father's Day will appear before the next board meeting. Mothers always get the accolades. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time for us to start promoting Father's Day. You <laughs> still get a lot of leftover Father's Day cards from last year. <laughs> Day you don't have to be the biological person involved to celebrate and recognize fathers. There's a lot of mentors out there. So I want to say happy Father's Day to all of you and our listening audience. So that's my comments. Did you find what you're living from, right? For some reason, I can't. Well, it's it, was, it was a minor, it was a minor thing, but I, I, I did want clarity, even if we were not going to change, I don't know why, it was one of the first things, but it was a... For the people, for the people at home, circle. you have uh, some very good, the, the full color packets on the solar, and I just wanted to know, for the people at home, if anybody at home wanted to see that, is that information online, that packet? Not, not, that they wanted to look at something they would have to come in and ask to see about. Okay, so it's, um, I know that some of the villages nowadays, when they make a board packet, they, they don't publish just the agenda, but they publish everything that the board has. That's what I was asking. Okay.
Supervisor report, page 206, under the draft minutes, under the supervisor's report, section 3, under each report, the third bullet. What page? Uh, 206, under the draft minutes. I think it means that it's 12. There's 12 and 12. it's 0 to 12. Uh, yeah, there it was 12. 12 from uh, that. Oh, it was 12. It's the number in that age range. Right. Okay. 12, All 0 right. to 12. 0. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm good with that. I just need it. Good. Don't have to change it. Great. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Eagle out here. Uh, okay. If there's no other board comments, then I would. Uh,